So now we will look at uh, the shortest path and how can we, uh, you know, found those uh, optimal or shortest path in a given graph. So actually the concept of shortest path is very uh, old, it's one of the most fundamentals uh, of graph theory. So many works have focused on, you know, like um, coming up with new ways and algorithms to identify shortest, oops, shortest path in, in, in graphs. So these are basically the principal uh, routes along which information is communicated in, in a graph. So these are uh, the most effective, the most um, um, uh, the most efficient, basically, uh, uh, trajectories to traverse in a graph. So how about our brain? So this is one thing I mentioned earlier. So uh, like scientific studies have not come to a uh, very conclusive uh, findings about whether our neurons they follow the shortest path or not. So um, how neural information is routed via, uh, via our brain is still um, a bit mysterious so there are lots of uh, theories, lots of work. Some of them hypothesize that they follow the shortest path so others think that okay the nervous system um, might not work that way so maybe a diffusion model is a more convenient so basically uh, this remains an unresolved question in, in neuroscience and you guys if you want to explore feel free to read uh, a bit uh, more about it so what exactly do we mean by a shortest path so this is a question so I would like you to think uh, about it it seems simple right like these are very obvious questions, but the way we define things, we, the way we give meaning, uh, meaning to uh, a particular word, it changed the whole way we formalize a problem, okay? So you might take it very granted or like as the shortest path is in terms of a length, okay? But you might define it in terms of something else, okay? So this is something to continuously think about. So sometimes we look at uh, we know we're studying basic things, but I would like you guys to always engage, go back to the basics and ask the most simple questions. Because if you dig deeper and you ask these simple questions, you might come up, even maybe you might discover a better way of solving new problems or addressing new problems, okay? And here, uh, generally, well, for in this example, if we look at this graph, okay? So... And what we have, we have a weighted graph, and what we want, we want to go from this node, the green node, to the target uh, red node. So given that we have a weighted graph, we can say we define the shortest path. The way we define it is that it's the path that minimizes the sum of the weights of the edges that we traverse along that path, okay? So this is one way of defining a shortest path. So in this example, you might want to go, like, basically, uh, let's say, to go from this node to the other node. You wouldn't want to traverse the, the shortest distance. So here, so uh, uh, let's say this, you know, like, this is the shortest path, so you guys can see. So if I take this one, it's, like, larger, so uh, it increases the total weight of my path. So this is the shortest path to go from... Uh, a to B or from this green node to the to the red one okay now the definition of a shortest path what is the definition it's uh, well, it's also called basically a, ge a geodesic so when you guys see the word geodesic it means as the shortest path okay so a geodesic or a shortest path in a graph is an ordered set of edges linking two nodes in a graph for which the sum of the weights of its edges is minimal so this is the way we are defining the shortest path at this point, okay, of this course, okay? So, what if the edges with the highest weights, now this is a good question, so what if the edges with the highest weights mediate the strongest and most efficient flow of information in a graph? In that case, if we want to find the shortest, does it, like in this case, basically, would the shortest path be the same as the most effective uh, or the most efficient path in, in, in the network. I would like you to think about it, read it. So here, what does it mean? It means in this case, okay, if I traverse um, 
If I want to go, for example, from this node, okay, to here, and then I select the most effective next local destination, the most effective. So remember, effective here means highest weight, okay? So the highest, the edges with the highest weight, they mediate or they transfer, um, you know, uh, they, uh, they allow to transfer the most effective information. So in this case, would I choose this one or, you know, the top one or the bottom one? The bottom one, yes, okay? So if I, I choose the bottom one because it has a higher weight, five, okay? It means like uh, in this case, the problem is reversed, okay? Sometimes you might define graphs, and in those graphs, actually, the highest weights or the highest costs on the edges, they, 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 they are correlated with the efficiency of the information flow uh, on the graph. Now, for example, let's look at this one. So what is the longest path to get from A to, uh, to F, okay? So if you find it, the longest path, I, I would like you guys to like look at it and try to find it and let me know what is the longest path, okay? So the longest path in this case is, remember, is the most efficient uh, path to communicate information. Okay, anyone? So we go from A then. Okay, let's look at those, okay, one by one. Okay, so the first um, suggestion is that we go from A, C, E, D, E, okay, yeah. B, D. F. So what is the, the, the length here? So we go from basically, um, this is the path that you guys have mentioned. So A, C, E, then B, and D. And then F. So what you have, you have 315, okay? Okay, any other suggestion? Yes, A, B, D, E, F, okay. So let me draw this, okay? A, B, Okay, maybe another color. A, B, D, E, F. Okay, what is the total? 320. Hmm? 320. 320. Okay, so you guys can see that this one is actually, these are two good options, but this one is actually the right answer. Okay, so when you try different combinations. So here, so if we want to apply an algorithm to find the, actually we want to apply an algorithm that finds the shortest path, but in this graph, actually the ways, the highest ways are the ones, we are interested in the longest path, okay? How can we apply an algorithm that finds the shortest path to this graph, okay? To find, to kind of find the longest path. Hmm? Make uh, take the negative values. What do you say? Yeah, make the edges negative in value. Okay, so you said making the edges negative in value. So you're, you're thinking about. So this is a good direction of exploration. You're thinking about transforming the weights or remapping the weights, you know, of the edges in the graph. Okay, good. So basically, there are different ways. So one idea. This is what you mentioned. So uh, we can uh, try to remap the largest path to the shortest path. So this is basically um, transforming, if this means how similar these guys are, so, okay, maybe use another one. 
So if this, if 20 is like basically encodes the similarity between A and B, we want to transform it to a distance. So this is what we can, uh, we call similarity to distance remapping to the edge weights. So this, this is done usually before, before any computation of the shortest path. So this is like a pre-processing step of your graph. And guys, this is very important to understand and keep in mind. This can be like, you know, an exam question. I can give you a graph and I define a real world problem. I don't tell you what really it means, but you can derive the meaning from the story and say, oh, actually what I want to find is depending on this problem formulation, if it's like, you know, good transfer, whatever is actually the, uh, the longest path. So first you need to remap and transform. Okay. So one way of doing that is to take the inverse or what we call uh, the reciprocal of the weights. Okay. So uh, you just, um, if you don't have zeros, like all your weights are different from zeros, so you can just, you know, take the inverse. And this is one way of uh, doing it. And if you have, so for example, let's look at here. So if your weights are greater generally than one, so if they're greater than one, so this is a good, uh, if this is a good, um, like a first approximation, okay? So... Let's look at uh, this graph. So what is the shortest path for uh, this one? So we have remapped, so we did the remapping. So we remapped uh, the original graph into uh, the original, if we call it similarity graph, into the distance graph. And then what we got, we got this one. So you can see we just um, uh, transformed it. So after transformation, what is the shortest path here? Can you guys find the shortest path? From A to F? Okay, so A, B, E, and F. Okay. So what is the length? Seven. Okay. So what do you guys notice? So if you look at this, and we compare these two. So the mapping, the remapping, actually does not necessarily give us the same path. Okay, it solves the problem, but um, it might not be, uh, you know, the best option. But I would say, in many, many studies, whether you know in neuroscience or other, uh, you know, like a graph-based analysis methods, they tend to remap, and generally. There is no consensus on which remapping method to uh, choose. If there is like, uh, also there is still, this is an ongoing area of research. Can we find a remapping strategy where both of these, uh, like basically where, sorry, where these uh, paths are exactly the same. So whether we're using uh, the first one or the remapped one, we find exactly the same path, okay? So this is something, uh, uh, that's still ongoing. There are different remapping strategies. They, we work with them, we use them uh, to uh, reverse problems, but uh, they might end up, they will not give us the, the same path, but still uh, we can solve some problems uh, using these remapping strategies. So keep that in mind. Now also keep in mind that these two paths might not be the same, and also maybe you can do some research and see whether there are uh, some new methods, okay, that allow us to do the remapping while uh, while constraining or enforcing the consistency between the shortest path and the longest path. Yes. Does shifting the weights affect uh, the results, such as uh, subtracting uh, twenty average from average? So this is something. Yeah. So this is another remapping strategy. So you can uh, you can try it and see whether. On, on different graphs and see whether you get exactly the same paths or not. So this is another remapping strategy, subtraction, okay? That's a good point. So here, uh, there is no theoretical, something to keep in mind, so there is no theoretical justification for remapping based on the reciprocal of the edge weight, so the way we've done it. Uh, so we might also consider remapping using other uh, functions. Uh, for example, here, uh, this is a first example. So we can uh, do, uh, uh, we can divide by a Wij, so this is the weight between nodes i and j, to the power of beta, okay? So, um, and here, uh, what it means, so when we have larger values of beta, this acts, uh, accentuate the confidence we have in edges with 
Okay, you guys need to fill in the blanks. Weights representing what? Okay, so you guys think about it. So beta is positive. So it means like it, it gives more confidence, okay, to the weights that have, uh, have what? So imagine when, when the WI is very big and you're dividing. So if the weight is, is, okay, if the weight, okay, guys, you need to, okay, I'll give you one minute. Think about it, one second. You need to reason, okay, it's important. So remember, when we remap, we want this to get minimal. So the minimal, it means the better. The smaller, the better, okay? Anyone? So if we give more weight to, like if we give more power to this one, let's say this is a large value, okay? It's, it's, it's a long path. Long path means good. So we want to give it more power. If we give it more power, it means when we take the inverse, we give it less power. And this is what we want if we do the shortest path, okay? So what does that mean? It means that here we have, we will give more power to edges with larger weights, okay? representing stronger connections, okay? Because this is the, remember, this is the original graph where a large weight means a strong connection. And here when we remap, if this is strong, this becomes weaker. And if it becomes weaker, it means if I go from this one to this one, I to J, okay? If it becomes, if it's strong, and then I made it weaker, it means I can traverse it very easily. If I go from a weight of one to a weight of 0.01, this is a good option for me if I'm doing the shortest path, okay? Okay, that's what it means. Great, now, so another, another mapping strategy, so uh, we can, if WIJ, the ways are between zero and one, then we can take either, either the, we can possibly take the negative log of the weights or one minus, uh, you know, like uh, the weight, okay? So this is, these are two uh, other mapping strategies.